Philadelphia Phillies got me stressing day and night. Got us stressing from sun up to midnight. Welcome to PHMI Phillies podcast. What the hell is that? High school musical or something? <laughs> Am I supposed got to know what that is? Got me working day and night. Got hee <laughs> Michael Jackson? There it is. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to PHOI Phillies podcast. I wish I was in a, I'm going to be in a happy mood. I refuse to let, you know, when it rains, it pours. And I refuse to let the frustration of the Phillies current start of the season have me down because yes, they have us out here stressing, but it's hap I'm happy to have all of you guys here with us. We've got Tyler Zuli, Jamie Lynch, myself, Renee Washington. Uh, yes, I was listening to it in the car and I was like, this is how I'm feeling about the Phillies actually. Chris Slummer, number one in the chat again. Uh, WYRM139, nice to have you here. Jay, Christy, yes, why, why, why do the Phillies keep doing this to us? Uh, listen, we're going to talk through the frustrations of last night's loss to the Reds. We're going to also talk I'm about fine. just overall. Yeah, everything's fine. This is I'm fine. Good. We're going to talk about uh, just kind of where the Phillies are right now, going through the good and the bad and, some, and what's in between. And then we'll also talk about what's going on around the rest of the league because there's been some other excited things going on around the rest of the league. So welcome in to P today's edition of PHY Phillies podcast, which is presented by Factor. Use code Phillies50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription at factormeals.com slash Phillies50. All right, so play by play with JJ, Dave P, Barbara Carroll. What's up, guys? Let's talk about it. This is our space, a safe space to be able to talk through what we're feeling and what's going on. Now, the the question is, what do we find the most concerning? We've got Bryce Harper, who's still hitless. We've got Connor Brogdon and the bullpen struggles. We've got Rob Thompson, who's under a lot of pressure and heat. People are not happy with Topper right now. Uh, on the other side, we do have some positives, like a Christopher Sanchez. There's so many directions we can go with this, because this is how the Phillies have started with this one and three start. And uh, how did we get here? Oh, because... The Phillies uh, weren't as ready to start off the season as we thought they were. So another day of fans leaving a game early. Um, another frustrating day. Another night that leaves us shaking our heads, wondering, you know, how do you go from a 2-2 tie to giving up a grand slam and, and, and then inevitably losing by three runs? Just so many questions. So many questions. So nice to have you guys here. Let's talk through it. First things first, the bullpen issues. Let's start there because... This well, offseason. Let's start with the positive. Oh, okay. I, 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 gonna... I feel like everybody's expecting doom and gloom today. You know what? That's true. It's like a rain. It's, it keeps raining. Yeah, it it's, sucks. The, and there's, and there's a lot of doom and gloom to get to from last night. Mm. Let's start with the bright spot. I was going to loop end positive. You want to end positive? I don't know. I don't really know how. I feel like I everybody is a little bit. Like, people are like, and do you want the good news first or the bad news first? I'm so bad with that. Because I don't want. It was last night. I don't want any of the bad. It was so frustrating that I think we should start positive and negative. All right, let's start with our guy Christopher Sanchez because he started he things was off on a positive. Extreme positive huge, last huge night. positive for Christopher Sanchez. Listen, uh, through the first five scoreless innings, he did go a little over four, five. He had eight strikeouts in the first five, uh, retired 11 straight, had a really strong performance. Christopher Sanchez, as we had talked about this offseason, had been mentioning how he's feeling like he belongs. He was dealing with some imposter syndrome last season. And this offseason, he felt like this was this time, he, the confidence was there. He felt like this is home. He felt like he really understood his role with the team. And he really, you know, that translated into him being able to just play and not having to think. And something he had been mentioning was how, you know, before he had to think about the little things in his control and growing into his body, whereas now he was able to just go out there and just play. And we saw that again last night. The way that he uh, started the game off, we saw the slider, the changeup. You know, he had his pitches around 95 miles per hour. And, you know, really steady, really good, really composed, reacted nice to the crowd. He got a nice ovation as he walked off for the final time. And I was happy because I was like, you know what? Yet again, the starting pitching is solid. Outside of Aaron Nola, everybody that started off has been very good. And it's been great to see Christopher Sanchez's, uh, you know, the way that he started off the game. Yeah, I mean, he was tremendous. If, uh, you know, I was one, I didn't really like vocalize it because I believe in Christopher Sanchez. I think he's uh, an exciting young prospect that showed a lot last year. But I part of me was nervous that the narrative amongst Phillies fans and media and writers was that Christopher Sanchez is going to take this leap. Christopher, it's like when the Phillies bullpen got ranked number one. I went, <laughs> oh, I hate gosh. this. <laughs> so part of me was nervous that Christopher Sanchez 
might have been a figment of our imagination. Oh. Might struggle stepping into the spot now that everybody was talking about him, like you said, with the imposter syndrome. Like, I did have a good chunk of my brain, I'd say like 35%, that was like a little worried that Christopher Sanchez could do it. Mm -hmm. uh, that shrunk last night to like 12%. Like, he's wow. got filth. And when he's now consistently, he went from hitting, you know, last year before he was fully stretched out and going, he was hitting 93, 94. Mm -hmm. Now he's hitting 95, 96. And if you're consistently hitting that with that change up at 84, 85, yeah, exactly. he's going to get a lot of swing and misses. Uh, he's got, he's got some nasty stuff. So that was really encouraging to see last night don't worry we're gonna get to all the negatives but I like know. but like <laughs> I, you know it's game four of the regular season i'm not gonna freak out i do want to give christopher sanchez his shine off the start of the show yeah uh, because everything else pretty much sucked <laughs> uh but christopher well, sanchez there did other not positives, but... there are a couple but christopher sanchez he he deserves some bouquets and if he can be at this level i mean yeah. the phillies rotation really does become one of the best in baseball yeah i mean christopher sanchez finished yesterday with a 3-6 era a 1-2 whip um in his five innings again eight strikeouts did have the one walk but you know strikeouts to walk 8.0 and gave up five hits um two runs of course as well but overall christopher sanchez looked very this is your number four you know, this is who you're, you know, able to bring in and rely on because Christopher Sanchez just really seemed like he was able to be locked in. And I think something that exactly as you mentioned that we talked about is which, you know, what are we going to get from Christopher Sanchez with a whole spring training start from the you know beginning of the season to see what he's going to be able to bring the team and looked great, looked steady, looked like. That, that was a huge bright spot. And I think as much as people are frustrated, and of course we're going to get into the frustration, when you look, you want to find, these are the types of things. Christopher Sanchez, Zach Wheeler, Ranger Suarez, Aaron Nola will be back. The starting pitching all, all around so far has absolutely been one of the bright spots. And that's major because, as we know, that's make or break in this league. And so the bullpen, the other issues, they're very, there are fixable issues. But from the jump to see how Christopher Sanchez played yesterday – very excited to see, and I'm intrigued to see how that's going to continue today with uh, our buddy Spencer taking the mound. Yeah, he's an, he's an intriguing one to watch this mm -hmm. year for sure. Uh, so some of the numbers on Sanchez last night, 85 pitches, only threw 11 balls. Uh, yeah. That is spectacular. Uh, he was only barreled up twice in the game, um, you know, which isn't great by any means, but whatever. Um, his exit velocity on average last night was only 88.3 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So people weren't really hitting him hard. Uh, he did get hit once at 112 miles an hour. Uh, but the sweet spots percentage was low compared to the league. His right. hard hit rate was under 40%. His K rate was 23%. Uh, and his walk rate was only 6%. Mm -hmm. So some of the advanced analytics on him last night. Uh, pretty great way to start the year if you're Christopher Sanchez. And, and guys, there's a screen grab for you uh, on, on Christopher Sanchez. This pitch, we talk about the changeup. He, he was getting pitching ninja all over the place <laughs> this, last night. This pitch right here, speaking of pitching ninja, when that pitch locates, yeah. you, you see where that, that 84 is right there. You see how, on, how far out on the front foot Jonathan India is? Yeah. I mean, listen, Jonathan India, is, I, I feel like, has regressed since his rookie year, which is it's been a strange, like – decrease in I don't know what he's been doing but anyway the, it's not to take take away from Chris Sanchez that pitch right there down and away change up to the to the right-handed hitter when that pitch is on that's filthy because if he's throwing that pitch there and then locating able to locate 95, 95 especially especially once he gets more and more comfortable up in the zone I saw both him and Ranger Suarez over the last you know two starts for those guys feel comfortable working up in the zone and when that starts to happen, then and then eighty four drops off the table like that, that pitch is nearly unhittable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rob yeah. Friedman was having a blast with Christopher <laughs> Sanchez last night. I think he tweeted out legit like three of his videos. Yeah, he's got. We stuff. all were. Christopher excited. Sanchez is is one of the extreme bright spots for this team. Absolutely, absolutely. I know in the chat you guys have a lot of chatter going on. We get some thumbs uh, yes. up for Chris Sanchez. To Barbara Carroll, I know uh, Tyler did answer your question, but for everybody, in case you missed the comment in the chat regarding post game shows, we will be doing post game shows. We of course did one for opening day, but we're going to be doing post game shows one game per series uh, instead of doing every single game, since of course 
the Phillies play every day. Uh, so rather than us doing a post-game show every single day of the 162 regular season games, instead, we're going to be picking each, you know, out of each series, we'll be doing a post-game show. So for the Reds, our post-game show will be tomorrow. Uh, hopefully the weather holds and we're able yeah. to have that post-game show tomorrow. Tomorrow could but, be a uh, Let's Play 2, but it's supposed to rain yeah. all day tomorrow. It just keeps raining. Does anybody know. here know when our first break in rain is? Because I Thursday. do. Thursday. Yeah, 5 a.m. on Thursday. Yeah, it's supposed to literally just... Rain, 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 rain. Do I you rain dance? What's your rain dance look like, Jamie? I don't have Jamie? a rain dance. Well, uh, that's, a, that's a problem. That's why it keeps raining, because you're not doing your I rain dance. I think tonight's going to get rain down. It's just a guess. you got to do your rain dance. Blue, blue, blue. <laughs> no, I do think tonight's going to get rained out. Yeah. It's been, it's also just because it rains all, like, just overnight. It really hasn't fun. stopped. It's yeah. been bad. It's, um, it's I know, Jay, you're saying you're blaming the weather. Yeah, good morning to you. And yes, the weather has been rough. Um, I know also in the chat, you guys are venting. Get it all out. Keep venting. Whatever you need to. Again, this is a safe space. Vent it all, all out there. Um, Dan, nice to have you here. You're also talking about Brogdon. I know K-Red. I miss the days of guess that swing when things were a lot easier. <laughs> and the most difficult part of our day was stressing over whether it was a right-handed or a left-handed batter. But here we are, guys. Here we are. All right, so some other positives. I know uh, some people are highlighting in the chat some different positives that stuck out for them. Let's, let's start on the positive. Jamie's right. I was ready to go right in with the negatives. See, well, let's the, be positive, the, Patty. Feel better? Now we can, like, let the venom I mean, fly. I mean, I refuse to let this – I refuse to let this break my soul. I, I'm fine. You won't break my I'm soul. I don't know that either. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Dang, I keep trying to give you some softballs, yeah. and you're just freaking out. I'm mentally Tyler in a good song. place because it was kind of like <laughs> spring training games where uh, – who was the one guy that stunk uh, in the bullpen? There was probably a bunch of them. Just one. I'm yeah, forgetting the guy's name. Uh, whatever. But it was like whenever he was blowing a game in spring training, it was like, okay, well, he, he can't. Here. He's not going to hurt us in the uh, regular uh, season. Austin yes. Bryce. Austin Bryce. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. That was and hopefully we don't see Austin Bryce. <laughs> and it was like, all right, well, Austin Bryce isn't going to hurt us in the regular season. <laughs> Last night, why I'm okay, Connor Brogdon's not going to hurt us anymore. No. And I think this is ultimately – on the front office, mostly. Now, look. This is my concern. Taiwan Walker and Orion Kirkering were hurt. And you didn't envision the year starting out with two guys getting hurt. But the inverse of that is that every pitching staff ever created is always going to deal with injuries. You were one or two injuries away from Connor Brogdon making this team and contributing in three of the first four games. That shouldn't have happened. Uh, I know Michael Mercado wants to get stretched out. I know Tyler Phillips wants to get stretched out. But a guy like David Buchanan has been mm -hmm. uh, a vet. He's been around. Like I know they wanted to give Connor Brogdon one, like, one more chance because he's out of options. I get it. But mostly I blame the front office there. And then I blame Rob Thompson. And then I blame Connor Brogdon. Yeah. We're not there yet, though. We're not there yet. We're staying positive, JB. Don't do it. No, uh, now it's time to get negative. No, no, yeah. no, we're not there yet. What, we're what, not there yet. What, what other positive? <laughs> Kyle Schwarber, all he does is no, hit singles. No, no, you, you, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So we're not uh, well, talking kind okay. of wow Brogdon yet. with these positives. We're not talking what else Brogdon do you have? yet. Um, a positive, we've got Sam from England in the chat who's like, you can't up, complain Sam? about rain because he gets rain all the time in the UK. Yeah. John Sequella, Spiral Out. Neil, let's stay in the positives, guys. I know everyone's ready okay, to jump on Kyle Brogdon. Okay, so here's, here's what I wrote down on my I'm notes. looking. <laughs> But the offense, no. The managing, no. What do you got? All right, all right, all right. Christopher Alec Sanchez Boehm. was it. <laughs> there was a great play. Trey Turner and Alec Bohm, top of the six. Loved that. Alec Bohm again had a nice play in the seventh where he, you know, makes easily goes, scoops up the ball, throws it the first. It was smooth. I, a positive is Alec Bohm at third base has been seeming very steady. But seeming also very composed. And another guy that, as we talk about offseason adjustments, they focused a lot on for the Phillies, Alec Bohm at third. You know, his his footing, his spacing, his awareness, reading the ball, reading, you know. And it's been great. There's a positive. Alec Bohm, I know it was said in the chat also. That is a positive. Um, other than that, skinny Kyle Schwarber. Playing a little, he's he's moving a little quicker. Singles machine, I think. Singles J machine. John Sequello was base. calling him Schwingles on Twitter yesterday. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he, he it, does it, look like he's moving pretty well. He is moving. Huh? He's he moving stole pretty third well. the other day. Exactly. Um, and he's singling the ball. He's having. Mm -hmm. He's usually the guy where if he starts slow, you go, okay, well, he's gonna Kyle's get. Kyle's not starting that slow. He's and he's starting pretty well. Connor's starting a little bit faster. So if, you know, I know we always talk about him having a slow start. And nope, he did not have a slow start. He's Trey moving a little bit good. quicker. 
Um, Trey's looking okay. You know, he he also has continued his consecutive stolen base streak uh, without being caught and did become the first Major League Baseball player to have 37 straight stolen bases without getting caught since Jimmy Rollins yeah. in 2007, 2008. There's another positive, guys. There's another. I tried to, I actually had to write down the positives because there weren't many. So I literally made a list of my three positives and that's all I got um, because there's not a lot of great things to be positive yeah, about. There's... But you know what I am positive about? It's eating right and making sure that you have a chance to simplify the process. We might be scrambling looking for the positives from yesterday's game, but you don't have to scramble looking for what to eat for dinner. Factor Meal Kits is the place to make sure you can simplify the question of what do I want for dinner, for breakfast, for lunch? What do I have to taste for? Because over at Factor Meal Kits, they want to make sure that they can take the stress out of all of your eating plan. They've got ready to eat meals. They've got fresh, never frozen meals that are delivered right to your doorstep and that are ready to be heated up in a matter of two minutes and they get off to a quick start to make sure you're ready to get going for the day. They've got a menu of 35 different options, including the popular options, calorie smart, keto, protein plus. I know we got the protein plus. They've got vegan and veggie options. And they also have 60 add-ons that you can add to your meals, like breakfast, on the go, snacks, smoothies, lots of options, even beverages to help you stay fueled and feeling good all day long. Now, over at Factor Meal Kits, they've got chef-prepared meals, restaurant quality. This is not a frozen dinner or anything. This is restaurant quality, dietitian approved meals that are also good for you. It's gourmet meals. They've got meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, mm. shrimp, truffle butter, um, asparagus. I love a good steamed asparagus. And so no fuss, no mess, no worries, no wondering about the hassle of dishes, groceries, prepping, cooking, cleaning up. So head over to Factor Meal Kit, your solution for fast premium meals where you can save money because it's much cheaper than takeout and also make sure to have a great option for your meals every single day. They're also celebrating Earth Day all month long, so you can look out for their Earth Month Eats badge on their menu for their lowest carbon footprint meals. So also you're being environmentally responsible as well. Head over to factormeals.com slash phillies50 and use code phillies50 to get 50 percent off that's code phillies50 at factormeals.com slash phillies50 to get 50 percent off there's a positive yeah well the bullpen may be changing a lot over the course of the next uh, week or so as we await orion uh Kirkering coming back on april 9th but one thing that won't change is the cold delicious taste of miller light and a lot has changed over the years but one thing that hasn't is the delicious taste of miller light the beer drinkers light beer it's the original light beer since 1975, and to this day, it's still the best one. Miller Lite has all the taste that you want and none of the stuff that you don't need. Uh, 96 calories per 12 ounces. It's a great time when you're watching a ball game, uh, whether you're going to the Penn Relays, getting ready for the Masters next week. A Miller Lite always hits the spot uh, because it tastes like a beer should taste. And Miller Lite keeps it simple, undebatable quality, with great taste and only 96 calories per 12 ounces. It's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. The taste of beer. That's what matters most. Uh, it's a light beer that tastes like beer should. Less filling and only 96 calories. The original light beer since 1975. And times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite because it tastes like Miller time. To get Miller Lite delivered directly to your door, visit MillerLite.com slash P-H-L-Y fills. Or you can find it pretty much everywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. All right. Well, the Phillies are off to a 1-3 and three start. And yes, as I know it was mentioned in the chat, and I forget who said it, they did start off 1-5 and five last year as they got swept by the Rangers well, and then dropped the, the series to the Yankees to uh, with – just one win in that game. But I think as much as we've talked about Connor Brogdon, I kind of want to talk about something else first. Well, I was just going to say, the That's slow a start bigger, is what people a are bigger pointing issue. to Rob Thompson about. Correct. There's some bigger issues here, bigger than Connor Brogdon. I think it's easy because of the fact that you have a whole grand slam. And He's we'll done. Get there. He's gone. We don't have to it's, worry about him anymore. It's easy to talk about Connor Brogdon and blame him because, yes, he really, really stunk. No, I think the but front office screwed the up. The fact that I want to I want to even talk about Bryce Harper. Oh, he'll be fine. He'll, he will be fine. He will. Uh, listen, uh, he still is hitless. And this is something that we talked about earlier that I, as we were going through Johan Rojas, Christian Pache, who takes that last spot on the roster, something that was mentioned by Dave and something that we all have been talking about is, okay, at the end of the day, 
whoever's in your eight and nine hole spot is not going to be as relevant if your heavy hitters are delivering like they're supposed to. Kyle Schwarber's moving quicker. He's doing, he's getting at least singles. Trey Turner's, you know, even with the occasional mistake, he's getting stolen base. He's getting to base. Um, Nick Castellanos, Bryce Harper, you know, some of these, some of these other guys, Bryson Stott have been more of a frustrating point for me too. The fact that Bryce has zero hits right now in his 11 at bats. Of course he didn't play it. We know game three of the uh, brave series and he did have a big moment yesterday and to at least keep the inning alive in the 10th, wasn't able to do so. And so I know there's a lot of questions around and frustration, I just say, around Connor Brogdon, but it's 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 throughout. It's a lot of guys, and it's starting with the top of the batting order that the Phillies absolutely need to be able to to be better. Bryce Harper's got to get going. <coughs> yeah, Rob Thompson after the game said it's all his timing, and you can see it. He's gotten two cookies. Last night was one, and uh, I think on Sunday he got one, which are pitches he usually just demolishes. I think Tyler and I were watching one of them, and we went – Ooh, like that's a pitch yep. that he usually crushes and he's just off. And Rob said after the game, uh, timing is the issue and he's not worried about it. And Bryce will come around. Uh, he's one of those guys you never have to worry about. Uh, but the offense as a whole sucks right now. I exactly. Mean, two runs against another team's number four uh, in Andrew Abbott. Like that's just not good enough. Uh, and Johan Rojas, you know, <laughs> that's... That's a war crime, my friend. You cannot get picked off there in that situation when you come in as a pinch runner uh, with, you know, your heart of your order coming up and mm -hmm. a chance to win the game. That is just a boneheaded play uh, that cannot happen. And, you know, I guess Rob's going to talk to him, uh, but that's a situation he just like there has to be uh, kind of a mini punishment for that. Yeah. Like you have to get the message through that that is absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, and Rob, you know, I'm sure he'll handle it behind closed doors. Uh, but come on, like you, you got to have your head in the game there, Johan. That's you do. literally inexcusable. You do. You do. And I think that's where I always say the game shouldn't even have gotten to that point of us now being able to blame Connor Brogdon. You're up 2-0 and then you don't do anything else. You don't score at all again until the, the bottom of the 10th. You know, and you can put pinpoint specific spots throughout the course of the game where you're up. As you mentioned, it's it's the Reds. It's their fourth pitcher. And I'm not saying like Bryce Harper, I know will be fine. But when you have the first four games, you know, you couldn't score against the Braves. You, you lose nine three. You struggled again. Obviously, Saturday was just awful from the jump. And they were playing catch up Sunday. Actually, their best offensive production game. Um, and then yesterday was the same thing. You scored two runs early. I was like, oh, you know what? Great. This is how you want to start the, the game off feeling good, score early and keep going. But they didn't keep going. And you took your foot off the gas, allowed the Reds to hang around, tie the game up and then ultimately leave the game up to chance as the, you know, you have to now rely on your bullpen to get you out of a tough spot in a high leverage situation. And so it just was another moment where you, you know, at the t throughout the, the offensive production, that absolutely has to be better. The, the, the at-bats, you've got to keep innings alive, and you definitely can't have moments like Johan's where you get caught there. It just, it's, it's inexcusable. So the frustrations are so much bigger than even the bullpen issues, but it does also a lot of that go back to Rob Thompson. How many times have we talked about in this offseason, we sat right here in these chairs and, like a broken record, said – Okay, around the edges are, are great. There's definitely need around the edges, but starting pitching, you locked in Nolan Wheeler. Love that. That was needed. You need someone that can give you better at-bats. You bring in a Whit Merrifield, which was a nice move. Utility piece, veteran. You bring in some smaller names, you know, obviously starting even back to a Michael Mercado, Spencer Turnbull, uh, David Buchanan. They brought in some smaller name pitchers to see what they can get out of them. Fine. High, high um, you know, low risk, high reward. We also talked about needing more bullpen arms. We also talked about, okay, what happens if Johan can't, can't give you good at-bats? What's the plan next? Because he is struggling. And right now, even as a pinch runner, not adding anything but causing you to get out. So now here we are again, Rob, Dave, back scratching our heads because we knew the bullpen once, especially Craig Kimbrell, was gone to ask all of that, those innings that he ate to be on the backs of an Orion Kirkering. That was a lot. And then not to mention, as we know, injuries are a factor. So I'm not, I don't want to be like, I told you so, but we, we knew there was the potential that an injury here or there 
could leave the Phillies looking like they are right now. And now we're waiting for April 9th for Orion to come back as a saving grace to help the bullpen get back on track because outside of Jeff Hoffman and Jose Alvarado, you know, you look at yesterday, the issue is you, they had nobody to go to. You couldn't put in Soto. I know we, uh, John was mentioned, uh, did a good job of tweeting out the updates for you guys post game around the, the presser. And what Rob was saying was ultimately you couldn't go to Gregory Soto. He was unavailable after pitching back to back days. Connor Brogdon and Nick Nelson were the only options in the 10th inning. And of course, if the game had went even longer, you'd have to continue to rely on Nelson. Four games in, Connor Brogdon and Nick Nelson is all all you have to rely on. Yeah, it's not it's not Oof. good. I mean, you know, they were turned down by uh, Jordan Hicks and uh, who's the other guy? His last name starts with a J. Tyler, um, the Giants last not year. Not Jansen. Uh, no, not Jansen. Uh, whatever. It's mentioned. escaping my mind. Two of the guys they went after chose elsewhere. You could do nothing about that. But then they, it just seemed like. They just kind of gave up on bringing in arms. Um, right. You know, I think come trade deadline, this team is uh, is 100% going to be looking for a bullpen arm because here's the, here's the facts. Uh, Orion Kirkering has a nasty pitch, and he's got the right headspace for uh, the role, and he throws some gas. But we haven't seen him really do it yet. No. Like, this is a guy that pitched, what, eight innings last year? Mm -hmm. Um, so it was a big leap of faith by the front office yep. to assume that he could just step into the 75 inning role. Uh, now I don't think it's all doom and gloom with the bullpen. Um, I think Jose, Jose Alvarado, the first appearance, I just, yeah. I go, whatever. Um, I thought he looked great on Sunday. Uh, Junior Marte is throwing gas again and had a really good spring. Uh, and I think he's going to contribute a, a big role this year. Soto has looked good. Uh, and Jeff Hoffman has looked good. Matt Strom. Uh, I, and Strom's been, I you know, 50-50, like, oh, yeah, like good, were, bad. Um, it was decent. You know, one of the things I saw people bitching about to about Rob Thompson because he's getting uh, everybody's bullseyes uh, four games into the year is why doesn't Jeff Hoffman pitch another inning? Here's the reality of that. It's game four. Right. And Rob Thompson in two years has had healthy arms in October. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to hear that right now. I get it. But clearly they're prioritizing second half of the season health versus game four of the regular season. And that sucks to hear, uh, but it's clear. You know, like there's a reason they went to Connor Brogdon in three of four games right. because they don't want to tax these guys to death right now. Uh, you know, they can say they want to go win the division, but the reality is they're probably not winning the division here. Uh, so they're not going to cost... They're not going to throw Jeff Hoffman or Soto uh, in three straight days, uh, regardless of pitch count on the fourth day of the season. That's just not the reality of the situation. So love it or hate it, they've told you that they're prior prioritizing guys' arms over a, a fourth game of the season win. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. It just sucks to watch right now. Yeah. But Connor Brogdon will be gone. Orion will be back soon. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think this is just Phillies baseball. And yeah. that's our reality. They start slow. Uh, and Rob Thompson handles his pitching staff the way he handles it. It's not going to change. This is what it is in the beginning of the year. Thanks for coming to my TED the, Talk. The other thing is, you look at someone like Connor Brogdon, and we all remember 2022 <laughs> World Series in four scoreless innings, strikes out seven. That guy's gone. And no, but I mean, but I'm saying he, in the he sense got of Monstar uh, sucked. <laughs> right, right. Yes, exactly. They so took that's, his powers. that in itself is also the reality of we're not talking about a guy that that just got brought up this year for the first time. You've seen him in bigger moments than a you know April first, you know game four of the regular season you've seen him in way bigger moments and he actually did well and performed back in 2022 obviously in the first his first two appearances prior to last night allowed three runs three walks in one and one third innings and then of course there was just last night giving up a grand slam uh he was he was awful but who would have thought he would have had that big of a fall from 2022 to now and i know tyler you actually have some stats and numbers on Brogdon, um, looking back at where he was a couple of years ago. I don't know if you... Yeah. Um, yeah if Tyler I can find them, because I have them, last night. <laughs> they're here somewhere. Well, he can't throw strikes. 
Uh, that's a problem. And he's lost velocity. I mean, he used to be a guy that was hitting 95, 96, uh, and now he's down at 93, 94, and he's not throwing strikes. And there it is. On the left is 2022 Connor Brogdon. 2021. Or 2021, excuse me. Uh, and on the right is... 22. 22. Yeah, those, and numbers, into, those numbers are good, too. And into 23. And I can't even see No, that. no, no. Oh, those so. are just 22 stats. The left <laughs> Wait, is 21. I'm the right is 22. Explain this to the I thought people. He was good. I thought he was okay in 22. He still. was. These are good numbers. If you look at the bar, it's just incomplete because he didn't qualify. But what oh, I'm saying oh, is oh, if you look oh, at oh, all okay. of the bars, I mean, the only thing that, like, really, really, really dipped was his fastball velocity, and that's it only went down nine-tenths of a, of a mile. It just so happens that guys also started throwing harder. He was throwing 96 and 21, and he was in the 87th percentile. He goes down to 95. He's down to the 71st percentile. But if you look at it, like his expected ERA was at a 3-1. That's good. Expected batting average was at a 2-2-5. That's good. Exit velocity was low still at an 87. That's good. Chase rate was way up. And I think that's the problem is guys aren't chasing his changeup mm. anymore because he – isn't throwing enough strikes early in the count. And when you're not throwing enough strikes early in the count, guys aren't going to chase the soft stuff down and away. It's why Sanchez was so effective last night was because he was getting ahead early in the counts and staying ahead and putting these guys away with the breaking ball and with the changeup. But the numbers here for Brogdon over the, the, that 21 and 22 stretch are really quite good. I, I genuinely don't know what happened to this guy and where he went. But these two years, even though it's incomplete in 2022, because I don't, I, I don't think he qualified for a large majority of these stats, even into the playoffs, Connor Brogdon was quite good. Yeah. I don't know what happened to this guy. I, I, it's, it, it's a, it's a, it baffles my mind to yeah. try to find out what happened to this guy. I watched the, uh, the post game last night, and I don't have any anger for Connor Brogdon. I'm, like, I'm not going to sit up here firing brimstone and say this guy sucks and all that. I watched a guy's major league career likely end last night. Yeah. And then I watched him stand up there uh, very commendably in front of the media. And he took his lashes. And Matt Gelb had a piece out this morning yes, where he, like, he made the team and he didn't even feel like he deserved it. Like, the guy's going through it right now. He's probably going to be uh, DFA'd today. Yeah. Uh, you're probably not going to see him anymore. He's... I would imagine somebody might take a shot on him because of what Tyler just showed. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a good chance he also clears waivers and maybe he goes down to Lehigh and maybe he stays in the organization uh, to be determined there. But apparently the reports are Fold and Dombrowski took the elevator down to yeah. Rob's office last night. Uh, I don't know what a, there is to discuss at this point. Uh, but I, but yeah. my, I kind of had a bleeding heart for Connor Brogdon last night. No, week. I mean, you just watched in 37 pitches his career crumble. And it is, it's a, it is, you know, on the human side, it's sad to see. Uh, but his problems that he needs to fix just doesn't have to happen in game right now. If, he, you know, put him. Well, yeah, it's, that's where I go back to the front office because you shouldn't have been an injury or two away from him. Exactly. Like David Buchanan, like, couldn't have been worse. Uh, I know Mercado and Phillips That's probably the aren't I there yet. I just don't yet, think it had like, to be Connor Brogdon. And I know Provo and John. Well, with Turnbull going today, you wanted Nick Nelson in case Turnbull implodes early so right. he can go a couple innings for you. I, I kind of get where Rob was if those were his only two options last night. I get wanting to save Nelson, ideally. Um, this is, again, prioritizing April baseball versus the long haul. Right, and that's... And that's what it came down that's to, important. and it sucks. But, like, to me, that's a front office issue. That wasn't a Rob Thompson issue. Yeah, and I know in the chat, I just want to highlight some comments as you guys are chiming in, too. Um, you're talking about Jacob Junis, John Sequella. Junis, yes, that's, that's who, who I was thinking of. Thank yeah, you. Jamie. John Sequella. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, you guys are always on the same on page. Point. Scott, you're asking how could someone get so wrecked by the flu. That was our thing. The flu knocked him out for a long time. Um, and then, Dan, you're also mentioning, like you were saying, Jamie, yeah, you know, there's no need to – I'm assuming this is sarcasm, but – you don't want to blow the arms of the best relievers early. You definitely want to make sure that such a long season, you're not overextending anybody in April. Yeah, like I saw and, people going, why not Hoffman? And yeah. it's like, well, they're not going to throw him, you know, two innings on the fourth day mm -hmm. of the year. That's just not reality and in then 2024 Bucket baseball. Getter, 215. What's up, Bucket Getter? You're mentioning, you know, I going player buckets. by player. Dominguez isn't, isn't good. Strom is inconsistent. You feel like Alvarado and Hoffman are good. Um, and the Phillies can win the game. Sir, they just can't get... You know, and be behind. Sir Anthony's, uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. He looked good feel on like you Sunday. Don't know what, you just, I don't feel like I know what I'm going to get from him. No, he's enough. still a wild like, card. I but do agree Strom is inconsistent, but I feel like his down is a little, it's not a big 
it's not as bad. Well, some of these um, guys had career years last year. Right. Chances right. of those repeating are probably slim. Right. Uh, but, but Sir Anthony is like, he's like kind of the, the hinge factor to mm. being a good bet or bad bullpen. Like, yeah. if he's good, you have a good bullpen. If yeah. he's bad, you have an okay bullpen. Yeah. And I know Provolone John's comment I want to hit on. He's saying maybe if the bats did their job, the bullpen wouldn't be taxed. And actually, the reason why well, yeah. that's one of the biggest things that jump out as me at me is because I always say this. Tyler gets to hear this the most because uh, there are so many similarities between the Phillies and the Philadelphia Union. And I find myself on each show saying the exact same thing. And much like with the Union, I was saying if their offense would go ahead and score goals, it wouldn't always require their defense and their goalie to have to save them. And it's the same thing for the Phillies. If you can get Bryce, just get on base, get a hit. Nick, get a hit. Kyle, keep getting singles. Trey, you know, keep stealing bags. If you can get your offense clicking and then scoring runs, and now that 2-0 lead becomes a 3-0, 4-0, 4-1, you know, you're, that momentum and that, you know, ability to kind of extend the game, put the team away, will take the pressure off of your relievers versus having Connor Brogdon or whoever be forced to be played in these high leverage situations with the game on the line. There was no reason why that game should have been tied up to two. There's no reason why you should have to go to extra innings. You know, you come out hot, you're playing, you're on the, you're playing on the front foot, as we like to say in soccer In baseball, same thing. And then you go to sleep, cold bats, no real answers. You try a pinch runner. You try different things here and there. The offense never was able to get going. And that I'm all about like scoring runs. Relievers are going to do their job if you set them up to be able to like simplify the game for them. Let them just come in and close out the game and, and you already have taken care of business. Don't wait until the 10th inning to now have to win the game when you could have won the game earlier if you went on and took care of business yourself. Brandon Marsh, another one who has been steady, I will say. There's a positive. I like how Brandon Marshall starts the season. But you need more guys that are yeah, going to come out. Yeah, Rojas gets to that ball in the first lesson. Right, you need more guys that are going to come out ready to go and, and get keep the inning going and score runs. Yeah, I saw some people, whether it was on Twitter or Discord channel here at, for the diehards, somebody was complaining about Kevin Long and how overrated and overhyped he is because the guys start slow. Mm. Uh, because, you know, they perceived it as the guys having a bad approach. I... Tyler, I'm curious your opinion on this. I cannot put that on Kevin Long. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these guys, I understand their approach and launch angle, but, like, it's it's relatively taught similarly on all the clubs. I can't put Bryce Harper's struggles in 11 appearances on Kevin Long. <laughs> I can't put Nick Raise Castellanos <laughs> flailing at outside away breaking pitches on Kevin Long. Like... These guys are veterans, highly paid veterans, uh, old dog, new tricks, yada, yada, yada. Like, I can't blame Kevin Long for the struggles uh, of some of these guys to start a year. And I just can't. And before I let Tyler jump in, I'm going to raise my hand and tag me and Jamie in, in honor of WrestleMania this weekend. Oh, wow. yeah, it is this weekend. Yeah, it is. It's happening. It's here in Philly. Uh <laughs> Not Wrestling. only can I not put the blame on Kevin Long, Some people can, I also can't whatever. make the excuse of it. Oh, it's April. It's early. This, that, and the third. Because, and I know we're going to get into the rest of the league in a moment. When I see what other teams are coming out, scoring runs. Everybody's eight, smashing. Nine, ten. Everybody is hitting the ball. <laughs> Everybody's hitting the ball. And that's almost what makes it worse. As I'm watching the other games go on around the league that oh, we're yeah. going to highlight in a moment. And that's why people I say it's Kevin Long. I cannot sit and blame any, like, I've, it's, it's inexcusable. It's April for everybody, yet there are teams out here getting no hitters, scoring double-digit runs, about how winning you finish, games, not how you start. starting off undefeated. So yes, it is all about how you finish. But Tyler, I'll let you. I'm gonna let you jump in now. I, I, I don't blame them. <laughs> I I think that there has to be a happy medium somewhere between the two because I, I do believe, like for example, a guy like Nick Castellanos, I, I genuinely believe that he his approach in certain situations and certain at bats he uses what he knows about certain pitchers. And I, I do believe he will, he goes up there thinking about first pitch swinging, like yeah. out of hand, first pitch yeah, swinging. Yeah, I don't know if Kevin Long can take that and, out of him. And the, the reason being is because I see at times him get fooled on a first pitch breaking ball, especially the slider, the, the righty-righty slider. I, I do think that there are times where a guy like Castellanos goes up there with an approach to get – to go first pitch digging and no matter where it's going to be 
he's going to take a hack at it. And a lot of pitchers have, or, or good pitchers have started to adjust, especially, like I said, right-handed pitchers with a slider that they can throw and bury it down and away, start it off the, the you know, burn it off the edge and, and push it out of, the, out of the strike zone down and away. I, I think that there are guys that, that kind of are He's not, a cooked pot. not fixable in that sense from a mental standpoint. Yeah, he, you're not, not from changing a, Nick Castellanos. Not from a physical standpoint, from a mental yeah. standpoint. I, I, I give credit where credit is due to uh, Kevin Long for the, I think, like the better. Alec the, Bone, the, Bryson the ascension, Stott, Brandon the, the Marsh, Johan Rojas, of, Christian Pache. Rojas can't hit. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't include him in that. He hit 302 last year in 150 at bats. I'm just so, saying. The younger guys is who I look to for you, a swing coach having bigger impressions. You credit going. Pache a lot more than I do, so I'm not even going to include his him. His OPS in, improved 250 points uh, while in I, Philly. I, I'm I just will, saying, guys take have the young guy. I look to the young guys for the hitting coach to take improvements. Kevin Long isn't going to change drastically. Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber, Nick Castellanos, JT Real Muto. Those guys are cook pies. Like they are. North of 30 veterans. They are who they are. So I look hitting coach, young hitters who are impressionable and hungry to get better. That's fair. And so I think that if you're looking to Stott and Bohm, there's credit there to be given. And I also do believe that, like, I think Stott was, Stott's going to hit no matter where he was. I, I think that there's help from Kevin Long, but I think Kev, uh, I think Bryson Stott is a, is a major league hitter. He's proven he's a major league sure. hitter, and he was going to yeah, hit. He's really good. He was going to hit no matter where he, whatever team he was on. Is his ability to hit a, hit well against left-handed pitching last year? You know, he hit 282 last year, I think, against yeah. left-handed pitching. Is that on Kevin Long? Partially. Is it on? Well, part of that is also Kevin Long saying, "Hey, Rob, uh, Andrew Abbott is the lefty today." His, you know, hot zones or Bryson's right. hot zones. I think this is a good lefty to get him in the game versus as opposed to, oh, Chris Sale, Sidewinder. That's not going to be good for Bryson to face. So I do think there's like, uh, a, a, you know, an adding to the manager's decisions from the hitting. Sure. Coach. I think that. So I think that where you're at and where the people who are like wanting to mutiny off <laughs> Kevin Long. <laughs> sure. I think you need to find a happy ground. And, and un, I don't and, think and he's under, got to give to earth. I'm just no, saying I mean, that these are some, professional some hitters. Yeah. There for him too. I just don't think he's to blame but, for veterans struggling to start a year. Is the long way of saying that. Yeah, I guess the point is when you have the younger guys, there's a lot more coaching, fixing adjustments that can be made. And listen. someone like a Nick Castellanos or Bryce Harper, yeah, the listening to, you know, they're not going to hear you can anything. Have Charlie Kevin Long. Manuel, the hitting guru himself, <laughs> sit down for six hours with Nick Castellanos and tell him every <laughs> philosophical approach there is to first pitch swinging. And it's not going to change who Nick Castellanos is. Yeah. Like, it's, not. it's just. It's not going to happen. He's going to flail at the low outside breaking balls, uh, and he's going to be looking to swim. He's kind of like he's a he's a himbo, you know. And yeah. when he's on, he's great, and he will get on. It's just not Kevin Long's fault. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Well, we'll we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about some other things going on around Major League Baseball <laughs> because I see you guys in the chat. You're talking about the Braves. You're talking about Craig Kimbrell who blew. He did blow a save last night. He blew a save last night. We'll talk about what and happened with the Orioles after Renee, this quick. Maybe his tears from blowing that save message. fell on the carpets <laughs> of the Orioles locker room last night. Uh, and maybe those floors were provided by Empire Today. I don't know, but I know all the Orioles know the jingle because Empire Today has been around forever. And if you go to EmpireToday.com slash PHLY, right now you can get $350 off new floors and the best part of Empire today is the shop at home convenience factor. Nobody likes going out to stores anymore. It's 2024. Who's got time for that? Empire today comes right to your house. And with their new virtual floor designer, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can see how the new floors are going to look against your cabinets and your wall color and your furniture. You get to see it right there in your house. And their philosophy is simple. They bring you stuff that they would put in their own homes. They're not going to overwhelm you with thousands of samples and this and that. They're going to listen to you, hear what you're looking for and what you want, and come to you with the best offers available. And there's a lot of copycats out there, but the empire is king. And flooring is all empire does. They live and breathe flooring. Empire today. So you can be confident you're getting honest, upfront advice. Anything they're going to give to you is something they would put in their own homes. So schedule a free in-home estimate today. 
All listeners can receive $350 off when they use the promo code PHLY. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com slash PHLY for details. Yes. And as we're talking through some uh, great opportunities to, you know, get some nice carpets. There's also some great opportunities to get your finances in order. That's with Trumark Financial Credit Union. Now, over at Trumark, they really want to make sure that they're connecting you with the best opportunities on your finances. Trumark Financial is actually located right here in our backyard. Although they're headquartered in Fort Washington, they've got 24 branches across the Philadelphia area, and they're deeply rooted in our community, deeply rooted with chances to help you and your family out. Their investments, their programs, they help people right here, right in our backyard in the city of brotherly love, as cliche as that is. Now, with, with the Trumark Financial Credit Union, they also have great rates, low fees, a better return on savings, more flexible options overall. And of course, they've got some digital tools and technology that allow you to have your financial picture right at your fingertip to be able to manage your funds. The best part about Trumark, again, is the fact that they are local. You don't have to worry about working with a company that's located halfway across the world. Uh, if you're in this area specifically, they are right here in the Philadelphia area. So make sure that you have a chance to take advantage of Trumark, become a member, check out their banking, and also um, know that your funds are going to be kept in your pockets, in your bank. When you join a credit union like Trumark Financial, you become a part owner, which means your profits come back to you instead of going to shareholders. So lots of benefits to being able to become a member and bank with Trumark Financial. So head over to trumark.com slash P-H-L-Y to learn more and find a branch near you. That's trumark.com slash P-H-L-Y. And they are federally insured by the NCUA and become a member of a credit union that has many benefits. And over uh, being a customer at a bank, it's a total no-brainer for you over at Trumark Financial. All right, as we're talking through, um, I know it was mentioned in the chat, again, some other things around the league. Make sure you guys are hitting that thumbs up button while you're here. It's nice to have you. Sam Cullen, any relation to Edward? Dun, dun, dun. You don't know that movie, Edward Cullen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally know a movie you don't know. <laughs> no, I definitely Did you don't. really just I... make a Twilight <laughs> reference? Is that Twilight? <laughs> Mopar, what's up, Mopar? Tyler knew it. Tyler I know everything. It, but... <laughs> I know everything. Okay. <laughs> Debak, Patrick Glenn. You, Debak. <laughs> Patrick Glenn, uh, Spiral Lab. I know <laughs> Jason Neal. That was the Neal. most selfish thing I've ever <laughs> said in my so life. Selfish. I know Every... everything. That's like me talking to my girls when they're like, how did you know that? I'm like, I know everything. I know it all. You're omniscient. <laughs> yeah. Um, hit that thumbs up button while you're here. Let's talk about some other results around the league because the Phillies, uh, although frustrating, there's some other things to keep an eye on. Now, it is only April. I never, ever, ever get too far ahead of myself because it's such a long season. But... It doesn't hurt to take a little gander around what's going on. There are some teams that are still sitting unbeaten as we start off April. And that's no April Fool's joke because that ended yesterday. And Thank one God. Of those Twitter sucked yesterday. I know. I know. It was rough. So they had some fake, some fake news Ooh, going out. Justin Jefferson has been uh, traded to the Green Bay Packers for a is. third round trip. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay. It was awful. Okay. The Thank Yankees God. are off to their first 5-0 starts since 1992. Yeah, I really the mushed that one, huh? The Tiger. Yeah. No, no. Well, the good no. news is you got 157 more games games. to go. The Tiger, yeah, though, 4 0. Six more games, five, seven more games. Yeah, sure. so they have mm -hmm. plenty of time. There's math. Though, Great math. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The Tigers started 4 0 for the first time since 2015. Tigers are a sneaky That's, team to keep in mind. That was Tyler's uh, team mm -hmm. to watch this year. And uh, one of the biggest news there's two big news. And one, because it's a rocket that was sent. Um, that was Mike Trout's 473 foot Did moonshot you? on his two home run night that right, he so had. Here's my problem with home <laughs> run tracking, and so I want to know if anybody agrees with me. Here. Uh, did, that was an absolute, like, he picked that thing down by his knees and sent it to the moon. Uh, that was as pretty a home run swing as you'll ever see. Now, it says it's tracked at what, 463 feet? 473. It hit a. A, a thing out there <laughs> that would have gone further than 473 right. feet if it didn't hit uh, the the whatever the wh who were they playing? I forget. Um, whatever I stadium it was, we'll just go with Great American Ballpark, even though they're here. <laughs> the if it doesn't hit the that, Marlins, it's a 500 foot home run. He launched that thing to the moon. I think home run tracking distance is stupid. No. Is that you know what? But is that a you're hot the take? same person. <laughs> The same Tyler, is that a hot take? Birds aren't real, so I don't know. <laughs> well, are they? Have you ever seen a baby bird? Yes, actually. No, you haven't. I have because I don't kill baby birds, Jamie. Mm -hmm. I've seen a baby bird. Tyler, home run distance uh, <laughs> tracking is stupid. Your thoughts? 
Why is oh this? Why is it stupid? Because it would have been further than 473 feet. Well, it's 40, if it didn't hit well, the I mean, monstrosity that was in left center field. You, you could say the same thing about <laughs> like Kyle Schwarber's one this, in San Diego. That was like 700. Feet. You could say the same thing about any ball that gets hit. Like, what happens if a ball is a rocket off somebody's bat and it hits the umpire? It's 2024. We have the technology to track where it should have landed. Well, oh my God. give me Probably. the true distance. Home run tracker is bullshit. Because they don't <laughs> want w- uh, Mickey Mantle's record to break. Is that the answer you yeah, want? Yeah. You, I don't know how planes fly, I want to see 650-foot home runs <laughs> because guys are hitting them. They're just hitting things that stop its path. So what should right, be done, Right now, Jamie? track the exit velocity, the arc. Should you project it? Yes. You got to do the math. Okay, it's like weather. True feel outside today. Okay. Give me the true home run distance. Because okay. Ryan Howard hit some into right center field <laughs> in Ashburn Alley that hit something, and it would have gone another 45 feet. Give me the true number. So, Don't give me this bullshit. All right? So, Fired up about the home run tracker. Because Mike Trout's would have been over 500 feet. Have you, guys, yeah. have you guys ever seen the, the comedy sketch where the, the flight attendant comes up to the guy on the plane and says, sir, you need to turn your phone off. We're about to take off. <laughs> And he questions her and says, why do we do it? And eventually she goes, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> We're in a metal can <laughs> flying through the sky. Mm-hmm. That's Jamie's uh, assumption on, on home run track. Well, I mean, what I'm saying good- is making a lot of sense to you guys. So you're processing it. I get it. So in the in the chat, they are there are some interesting thoughts. Um, Spylot is claiming that birds aren't real also. Um, why, you know, he saw it scribble on the side of a van. And why would that van lie? Exactly. Yeah. Not. I think they're real. I've seen totally baby birds and baby thoughts. eggs, and I haven't killed them, Jamie. Mm-hmm. Um, Mopar is saying they can track a golf ball. They can track a home run. Okay. Um, Sean Comp is saying, uh, you're, you have comp in so your YouTube name. Man so is I saying think they just, that what I'm describing is what they do. Now, my impression is they are yeah, stopping it's tracking it. tracking trajectory, not actual. So they are doing it the proper way? So 463 feet is the proper distance. Because that hits something. It would have traveled further. See, we have to get to the bottom know. of this. If uh, hypothetical man's right, then Major League Baseball. This reminds me of the time you try to figure out what mm-hmm. is attendance and what's a sellout crowd because <laughs> <laughs> <there's> don't start. <laughs> the A's had an announced attendance attendance of thirty eight hundred the other day, yeah. and there might have been thirty eight people there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. you know well, what wrong, is actual? I'm an idiot, but I want to see five hundred foot home runs, and guys are hitting them. I know it. Oh man. Because yeah. Mike Trout hit that thing. That was Tyler. Did you see it? It was a moonshot. It was. It was, it was like incredible. baseball swing porn. By the way, speaking of uh, that that swing in particular, but Mike Trout over the course of his career, he might be one of the best low pitch hitters I've ever seen in my life. I mean, he's yeah. like he's one of the best hitters. Like you could stop sure. that sentence right there. Yeah. But, but he should not have been able to hit that the distance he did. His ability. It was to, above his knee. His yeah. ability to 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 get launch angle, and I know a lot of people don't like launch angle, but his ability to get launch angle on a pitch that low is actually incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why that was his 26th multi-homer game of his career, he's and very he's good. got 371 homers uh, for his career. He's uh, passed Gil Hodges for 81st on the all-time Old list. Old Gil. Mm-hmm. Well, there's another historic performance that happened last night. The good old Houston Astros, 30-year-old Ronel Blanco, in his eighth career start. Pitched a no hitter for the Astros in their 10 0 win. Now that's how you win a game 10 0. 10 10 10 uh, all right, 0. How, how? And he went from the story is fantastic. He was working at a car wash in the Dominican Republic before receiving a $5,000 signing bonus. Um, and then that was back years ago. But he did not pitch until he turned 18. Houston signed him at age 22. And here he is now making history. All right, how they cheating um, He's now? only pitched in 58 and one-third career innings. What I know you can't uh, fake or cheat a no-hitter, but um, do they have some kind of like ball cloaking technology as it approaches the batter? Are they using some new NASA like space-grade uh, lube on the ball? What are they doing that they can do this, Renee? Once a cheater, I'm going to question well, everything. Well, Ronald Blanco doesn't seem like a cheater. He wasn't even a starter. <laughs> what do you know about until, <laughs> He wasn't even a starter until last year. This is a man that's on the up and up. He's doing things the, with integrity. The great Jason Stark <laughs> tweeted this yesterday. Since the start of 2022, all of Major League Baseball has thrown three no-hitters. One mm-hmm. of those was Michael Lorenzen. Yeah. The Astros have thrown four. Yeah. The Astros also have 16 Shady. regular season no-hitters. Um, since 1962, which is, of course, the most in Major they, League Baseball. They developed like the Harry Potter cloak on the ball. So you do know Harry Potter. 
My sister was a, a Potterhead. But then why did you not know when I was I know talking about, about the, the invisibility jelly beans? cloak? I didn't know about the jelly beans. Oh, uh, the jelly beans are not a, a major thing. I know about the, the broomsticks. Okay, because those are like major facts. And the about. giant. And then the bearded guy. I, I know a oh, little bit. Oh, you know about Hagrid? Yeah, I know this, the oh, cast. Oh, Hagrid. And the Weasleys. I was actually on TV the other night. I know night. a couple things, but I don't know your jelly bean references. Okay. Don't but get the, the jelly but beans. But the Astros are up to something. I don't know. I Maybe just, they're blinding the batters. Something. I can't um, trust them, Renee. It is hard to trust them. Once mm -hmm. you know, once you break that that trust and you get caught cheating, it's hard to it's hard to go back. <laughs> K Red says anti ball cloaking <laughs> pants. Yeah, maybe it's something where like the ball blends in with the pant technology, and they have some LEDs yeah. in their pants where it blinds the hit, the hitter. Something's up. You're really on a lot of conspiracy theories today. Mm -hmm. Some would just say I'm uh, I'm just. This is what happens when Jamie doesn't eat, awake. When Jamie doesn't know, eat breakfast. <laughs> He didn't eat breakfast. He slept, though. Yeah. And now he's just all spewing out conspiracies. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we did talk about the Orioles a little bit. Craig Kimbrell did blow a save. But the Orioles did win with a walk-off. And they debuted their home run handlebars in their game. And then went on to win. And they're off yeah. to a 3 and one start. <laughs> Matt Tucker says the Astros are using smaller balls. I don't doubt it. Something's up. Maybe the Is mud they're bringing game? in. Uh, maybe what was the uh, the Jim Carrey movie with the rubber and the or Robin Williams flub or something? Flubber. Remember? What? Wait. Flubber. Flubber. Yeah. Maybe their balls have like a flubber technology in the center. Like something's up they here. They should check it. Yeah, they, they should, should definitely check, check the Astros mm. for cheating because we're now we've now become the PHOI conspiracy. You know, we cross over to a lot of links. We hat? give you some weather. We should. <laughs> That's what in the chat. Uh, hypothetical man saying there's tinfoil on under his hat. Are, yeah. are you secretly wearing a tinfoil? Well, Spiral out says, is it a conspiracy if it's true? I mean, that's a fair question. So what do you think is more of a conspiracy? The Astros continuing to have no hitters or the home run trajectory? Uh, my friend Mike Passione is in the chat, and he worked for the Phillies back in the day. And he said, back then, <gasps> I don't, this may have changed. But when I interned, uh, I remember them asking me that it was basically the official scorer's guess. And he said that they would just add like 10 feet to home runs. Now, I do think it's wow. changed because exit velocity wasn't even tracked 20 years ago. So the technology and ball flights and, you know, whatever those track Is track that a way to be able to control who has the records? Or are the Astros really cheating? I mean, Stay they have four. I, 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 they don't have Brent Terry Strom anymore, the pitching coach, who I was uh, obsessed with for several years. So, like, I don't know. You can just be that good at developing pitchers. Just saying. It's got a flubber core. He didn't pitch until he was 18, and then the Astros picked him up four years later, Shady. and now he's hitting. Shady. He's, and, and then eight years later, he's hitting no hitters. A man that was once just working in a car wash, trying, working, 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 day is that, night. I know the song, but who is that? Diana Ross? <laughs> what is that? I opened the show with this song. Still Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. It was Michael Jackson an hour oh, ago. Geez. It is still Michael Jackson. You don't know that. Yeah. Got me Mopar, working. yeah, he says maybe the Day catcher's yelling night. Noonan at the batter every time the ball comes across. By the way, guys, would you maybe like shocking the batter? Would you guys Wait, like oh. a, uh, a, a oh. so the group of teammates that have thrown no hitters that have the <gasps> lowest bonus history combined in MLB history? Wait, what's the question Wait, again? Huh? So there is a trio of teammates, they're on the Astros, including Ron Al Blanco. Have the lowest signing bonus combination in Fram terms actually, of dollars. Framber Valdez. Framber Valdez. Clearly Rano. Ronel Blanco. And, and Christian Javier. Oh, yeah. Combined. Oh, God. Less than a million. $25,000 signing bonuses. Total. So maybe. $75,000. No, 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 no. No, no. Total. $25,000 for the total. three of them. Total. Valdez was $10,000. Javier no was $10,000. Blanco was $5,000. Uh, so if you want to give uh, kudos where it's due. Uh, Roman Ak uh, Akumarez and Aza Campo, they're their two scouts. Where the, uh, those two scouts found these three guys. But you well, know what? Well, then pay them all the money I'm, in the world. I'm going to take your conspiracy and raise it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because good lean into it. If the people, if the guys throwing no hitters were these big name, mm -hmm. you'd raise an eyebrow. Ooh. But they purposely are getting. Ooh, I like they're it. purposely bringing in these under, you know under the radar, low-paid guys, mm -hmm. Aron El Blanco. And now 
like my initial now reaction was like, oh my gosh, it's giving a Cinderella story. They dangle like, the car what a great wash story. Thing out and there. you right, they dangle the Don't car wash. It, it immediately covers up the entire yep. truth because you're so blinded by like what a great feel good good like rise to no hitter story. The trash but can reality, is obvious they won't look at the flubber. They're ball. giving them right at smaller they're giving flubber info. ball, the LED now visibility. That I can believe that's a conspiracy. See? It's, you know, yes. congrats to him. That's good for him. But, and um, you guys are being mean. I don't trust it. My singing is great. Or, I just don't sing ooh, well on ooh, purpose or, here on got the more. show. Dark and most The yeah. yeah. just find good players nope, and they're nope, good at developing. No, that's not, not possible. Not, 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 you don't get the seven no, straight again, ALCSs three? by not no, cheating. No, but you have three guys currently but, on your roster under $25,000 signing bonus that all hit no hitters, which means they all hit no hitters back to your point. That's three of the four in the last, how many years was that you said? Since 2022. In two years, they've had four mm -hmm. no hitters. Three of them are guys More that they got for dirt cheap. Baseball. Dirt Shady. cheap. You mean to tell me that with all the great talent, the pitchers, the only people that can hit no hitters are the Astros and Michael Lorenzen? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm glad you guys are seeing the light. Thank no, I, that that I'm not I'm, I'm not subscribing to your conspiracy. Yeah. Theory. I love conspiracy theories, though. I think mm. there's something so yeah. it just makes you think a little differently. I'm just saying we'll have it's to little, find out. Well, you shady. know, we're gonna continue. You heard it here first on PHY Phillies. We're gonna continue peeling back the layers and investigating. When all the sheep wake up in two years and realize yeah. the Astros were cheating. Again. Listen, I hate to say this, first. but how many times when we get these breaking news stories, whether it's <laughs> Diddy or something else, that people are like, "I knew this. I've known this mm -hmm, for years, but mm -hmm. I didn't say anything." And we're just speaking up on it. Mm -hmm. We know there's a conspiracy going on here. I, you know what, Jamie, you sold me. Yeah, I'm thanks. Put the, let me put the tin foil yeah. hat on. I'm leaving. Feels Tyler's good. Mister. Yeah, and they you know what? They're form fitting. They As get, a Virgo, they it's snug. hard. I, I live in the the uh, world of what's provable and scientifically provable. Um, but I'm going to go on a limb and actually, I believe this. And it's the Astros. Mm -hmm. Do we put anything past them? You know, Major League Baseball uses the Delaware River mud from up in mm. uh, Jersey. Mm Astros are probably know, using some NASA mud. Yeah. You know, okay. It's okay. just all checks out. Interesting. Yeah. It is it is pretty interesting that the Astros dynasty mm. has been in also around the peak of like no hitters and all the when you start, mm. let's take a look back. Mm. Okay. There you have it, guys. Conspiracies coming your way. Um, more conspiracies. I know Dave, yeah. Why is the bank why does the bank only have twenties at the ATM, but Wawa has tens? <laughs> I've we always do need, wanted that. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have a PHOI conspiracy segment. We're gonna br bring out the tinfoil hats because there's a lot. But of as Spiral Out says, it's not a conspiracy; it's real. Right. It's just sheep eating eating the slop. Okay. <laughs> wow. On that note, stay woke out there, my friends. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Trust nothing. Birds aren't real. No, birds are real. All right. Well, with that, uh, Tim there's... Apple's spying on us. Oh, he's all. still going. Yeah. Well, that's not a conspiracy. That's real. Oh yeah, that's very real. Yeah, but we... again, it started out as a conspiracy until it was proven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, congratulations to our buddies out in uh, around the world. Our CHO buddies specifically. Talking about Showtime and Naga. That was, was great. He was spectacular. Beautiful. He's, you know, he's, he's he said my, it. That's good for my he's futures buys in fantasy. I know. He's on your fantasy team? In two of my three leagues, I got him. Dang, I didn't get him. Because of that, who was the I comment I read Harper, in spring though. training that was like, giving me zeros? Whoever the vet was that like caught him that day was like, damn, I'm going out and buying his rookie cards. Remember yeah. we read that quote? And oh, I was yeah. Like, and I circled him on my fantasy cheat sheets. I was Aww. like, that guy's, that's not a bullshit quote. That's, that, this guy's got stuff. Yeah. I mean, from his press conference on, it was, he won everybody over. He won me over with his, like, Chicago, time to win, or whatever he said. All right, so we will have more conspiracies coming your way. Uh, because, listen, there's a lot to, a lot to, to, to worry and wonder mm -hmm. about that we should put on our Harry Potter mm -hmm. hat and, uh, you know, go out with our invisible cloak. The sorting hat? <laughs> yeah, the sorting hat. I knew and that. go out with our invisible cloak and try to figure out what is really true. Well, that's what is true is that's an end for us. This is time for us to go. It's been fun. Uh, we got to also vent through Connor Brogdon. We got to vent through the loss. We got to vent through the hitting struggles, the lack of offensive production, the frustration with Rob Thompson. We got to shake it off and let it go. And hopefully now... Um, much like last year when they started one and five, the Phillies will. It's early. I don't want to see a rain delay tonight. I want to see them go back out there and get a win. Okay. I, I don't want them to sit on that stink of last night another day. Because tonight appears, we do get a chance to see tonight's game. Is our is our good old? Do you, 
I'm, I need his middle name because I want to make sure I say it correctly. It's not only Graham Ashcraft of the Reds, but it's our Spencer Ketchum Turnbull. Ketchum. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't think it's Ketchum. I think Ketchum sounds better. Right. Got to catch them all. Spencer, you got to catch them all. Turnbull is taking the mound to start tonight, and so we'll see if the game actually happens. Because, of course, there is the game tomorrow and then a day off. So there is some possible room to flex if needed. But either way, we'll have our post-game show tomorrow night, weather permitting, if that game does get played. Um, so tomorrow will not be at 11 a.m. We should be giving you guys a nice post-game show following the Reds-Phillies game three as the Phillies hopefully can get in the win column in this series tonight and tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to PHOY Phillies podcast. Where we've had a chance to unwrap all the truth behind the loss, but also the conspiracies going on around the league. So um, for us here, Tyler, Jamie, myself, Renee, have a great rest of your rainy Tuesday. And we'll see you back tomorrow night for our post-game show following the Phillies game versus the Reds. See you then. We all city like the mayor. 